Hallelujah. Welcome to Bible study. You know, we believe in the Word of God. We believe that this Word is going to change your life. Uh, so many times in our life, we, we go about doing our things our own ways. But the truth is, we need to come back to what the Word of God says. Because this is the direction that life is supposed to live with. This is the way we're supposed to go forth in our life. A lot of time, Christians try to make decisions based on emotions. Uh, they try to make decisions based on what their opportunities are or where they are. But in reality, we need to work by faith. And that faith only comes by the Word of God. So let's learn from the Word of God. Let's believe God and let's trust Him. Father, we thank you for your grace, your goodness. I know you're faithful to your word. We trust you, Lord, and we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, Father, that you're teaching us even this right now. Thank you, Lord, that you are working to us, Lord. Father, we believe that your favor is upon us in every way, and we know and we believe that you are going to do mighty miracles in our life. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we give all into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So if you've been on this journey with us, you know, we've been talking about healing. We've been breaking down uh, the pathways of healing. We've been breaking down all these things and issues that may seem like uh, like scenarios or situations where healing is not working or, or the pathways in which we are actually going to receive healing. And we've been talking a lot about it. So I encourage you, you know, if you need healing right now, this is the time and the right place to be at the right time. So you're going to receive your healing tonight in Jesus' name. So we've been talking most recently, in the last few weeks, we've been talking about two elements, what we call the two most important ingredients to receiving healing, and that is faith and power, okay? So we've been talking about faith and power. Uh, we have gone through a lot of things in here. We have defined how specifically, you know, uh, when we talk about faith, there's uh, different elements that we can look at about it. We looked at how faith can come through, be, be transferred through simple faith. Uh, basically, that means we read the Word of God, we believe it, and we take it as our own, and we receive what the Word of God says. You know, we can take it as something as when people lay hands on, on you, so that there's a transference on the power by the person who believes in that, okay? And we said, you know, how people minister through the Word of God. They are specially anointed ministers who, who do that, and that's how they are transferred the faith, okay? So we, we talked about this. But in all of this, we had said and we have set up and we have understood this one thing that is important is that we need to mix faith in with power. We need to mix the faith with power. We cannot have the power of God just come up on the scene to make something effective unless and until faith is mixed with it. Okay. Recapping here again, you know, we reread and things how, you know, even like John's Lake says, you know, electricity is everywhere, you know, but when we talk about it, it, it's just there, the power in the natural realm. We know electricity is it, but you need to flip the switch in exactly the same manner. The, ho the Holy Spirit is there with us. He is the power of God. He is the very spirit of God that is doing and making things happen. In that same way, if we want to see, you know, like you need to be plugged in to electricity in order to receive from the electricity, the power and the goodness that it produces. You know, tonight we're sitting here, we've got lights, we've got cameras, we've got all these things, elements set up that allows you, what you're using your phone or, or whatever you're using through, that allows you to visually see this situation, this, this, this program, because of electricity and someone being able to connect with it. In the same manner, we need to understand we need to connect with the heavenly power of God. We need to be connected to the spiritual realm. We need to be connected. And that happens through switching on faith itself in our life. We've got to learn how to mix faith with power. Okay. Um, let's look at chapter Acts, Acts chapter 6. Uh, let's read here from the book of Acts. And let's read from Acts chapter 6. So Acts chapter 6, and we're reading here from verse 3. Okay, verse 3 says here, verse 3 says here, and let's, let, let us read. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom, whom you may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochius, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, 
whom they set before the apostles and when they had prayed, they lands hands on them. Okay, understand something, something we need to understand here. The apostles are going about doing things and suddenly they realize, you know, there are certain things that need to be done are not being fulfilled. And people, and they said, this, they come up with a solution. Okay, let, let's choose from us within good men. And all of these men were chosen with the idea that they were filled with power of God. They had the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. And these were the one things that were supposed to be done. Okay, so when Jesus is talking here, understand, when Jesus is talking here, he tells the people um, in this moment that when, when, when the disciples are talking, they're actually going about and speaking from the words of Jesus. They, they are saying, you know what? We need to be witnesses. We need to be the ones who are going about in Jerusalem. We need to be going about doing what needs to be done. Okay. So now after understanding their proclamation, they are understanding their profession, they come to the people and they realize, you know, they ask of them something. And this is what they ask. We'll, when we look at read, Acts chapter 6 verse 3. Let's read again. Filled wherever brethren look out among for you seven men of honest report full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So the conditions were set about. These people need to be had or honest report. They needed to be filled and be full of the Holy Spirit. And they needed to be full of wisdom. Okay, so now it goes to show that when the seven are chosen, these are the qualities that are present in them. Okay, I'm taking you somewhere so you can understand. These are the qualities that are present in the seven that were been chosen, among whom was Stephen, okay? But when it talks about Stephen, there is something else being talked about, and that he was also, not just this, he was a man full of faith. Why is that important? You will understand this. Faith was, was presented in him. Why? Let, let's read here. Let's read verse 8. Understand, understand this. Verse 8. What does verse 8 say? And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. There are seven chosen, none of which who are regarded, so told that there are signs and wonders going on, or they are performing miracles. Only of Stephen, it is said, he is full of faith and power, and he did great miracles and wonders among the people. So, you see, once you are filled with the Holy Spirit, understand, why put it? Once you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are full of power. Once you have given your life to Jesus, once you have put yourself there and said, you know what, Holy Spirit, come and take over my life. Once you've put out there and allowed your Holy Spirit to come upon you, you are full of the power of God. You are full of the power of God. That means there is no more power coming. There is nothing more. You are absolutely full to the brim. You've been filled up with so much of power of the Holy Spirit that there is nothing else to give forth. So now the difference within a believer and someone who can see miracles and signs and wonders come into their life is not of power. A lot of times we question this. We, we question, God, can I get some more power? You don't need more power. You have the fullness of the power of God. You have the fullness of the Spirit of God. You are a Spirit-filled believer and a Spirit-filled believer. Why we say this? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Remember this. But you shall receive power where after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So the power is already there. We need to understand that the miracles and signs and wonders that we are actually seeking it's not because of a lack of power, but of a lack of faith on the action to get the power into our lives. That is one of the most important things you will learn. A lot of people go about in church. They, they look for the most powerful men. They look for the most powerful people in, in reality. What we need to understand is God is able to perform with even whatever power is given. He is more than able to perform. What we need to understand is that faith is the reality that needs to be activated in our life. Faith is the thing that will automatically follow. The, the, when, when miracles and signs and wonders are talked about, these things will follow automatically after faith. Stephen was full of power. He did great wonders and miracles. Why is that? 
because he was not only filled with power of God, he also had the faith of God. He was filled with the faith and power. So that means when those two things are mixed together, that is when we will see the reality of power flow into our lives. Okay? When we, uh, I'm reminded of this. When, when we talk about that woman with the issue of blood, she came to Jesus. She came to Jesus, touched the hem of the garment, and Jesus says this, he realized power had left him. He realized that power had been drawn from him. But when he looks at this woman, he doesn't say, daughter, my power has made you well. No, the power was always existing. The power was always present. What it was needed was that your daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith activated and received the power that was there. Everyone was around Jesus. They could have received the same power. They could have received the same healing. They could have received far more healing because the power of God was present. But in order to activate that power, we need to have faith on that power. We need to have faith in this thing, you know. And this is why it is very important, you know. Uh, let's go to Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 17. Where does this faith come from? Because if this faith is the most vital switch what we say, you know, the most vital key element to receiving the power from the power of God, then we must be able to understand where it comes from. We must be able to grasp it and take it where it comes from because we need faith in our life. Say with me, I need faith in my life. Amen. Let's look at verse 17. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Everywhere Jesus went, you know, uh, uh, understand, everywhere Jesus went, you know, people heard of the stories of Jesus. They had heard of this man who did miracles. They had heard of what the power of God would do, you know. All of these times when they were hearing this, something was happening. And the thing that was happening was that faith was being risen in. You know, faith was being activated. Faith was being rose, rose in the people. Faith was being, being brought forth in reality into life. You know, that is what was happening. And how did it happen? Because they were hearing the word of God. Hearing and hearing the word of God, they received the faith of God. Hearing and hearing the word of God, they received the faith of God, okay? Uh, you go about all all the uh, the moments where where you know the disciples are there and people are coming to to rush through to Jesus. They go about this way, that way. Say so many of them throng Jesus. Where did they come from? They didn't just uh, just come about standing somewhere. They didn't just, uh, just somehow come there. No, they had heard of Jesus, hearing of Jesus. That faith grew in them. That faith in them grows this expectation that if I and there in the midst, I will be healed as well. I will receive the blessing of God. I will come to that place. You know why? Because faith rises up within us, okay? Now, um, when, we talk about, when, when we talk about healing, okay, uh, we must understand. We understand and know that the healing anointing exists, okay? A lot of people understand this. Uh, when we talk about the anointing of healing, that means the power to break these bondages of healing uh, of sickness and disease is always there. The power always exists. It's the point is that a lot of people don't understand how to get this anointing to work in our life. And that is what we need to understand. We need to have faith in this so that we can understand, you know. A lot of people go about doing one more thing I will say, you know, a lot of people go about when we took a, a lot of people when they talk about a sick person, you know, when, when people are ministered to it, they feel this somehow, this supercharged, you know, this nature within them. You know, when someone prays, somehow you'll see people collapsing under the power. You'll see people moving this way and that way. You'll see people somehow, they want to experience this power of God. And they feel that once they've experienced this power of God, that's the reality of healing coming into their life. But the truth is, the Word of God reveals no real or final healing, what we'll say, can take place unless there's a release of faith in that individual. A release of faith must exist. A release of faith must come forth. Faith must be implemented in a situation. Faith must go forth in a situation. You know, a lot of people go about 
so much focused on power, they miss it about and, and they think, why is this not working? You know, sometimes it feels, I, I feel something. Oh, I know something's happening. Oh, I feel something and I know something's happening. But the truth is, it's not those situations or those moments that determine our faith. Our faith comes from hearing and believing on the Savior and the healer. Once you start mixing this faith that you've heard and heard and heard, once you start mixing this faith with the power of God, you will start to see the anointing just flow automatically into your life. You know, um, why we say this? The Spirit of God is always present to heal people. Understand? The Spirit of God is always present to heal people. It is the desire to see people in health and do good. It is God's desire to see people healed. Okay? So the Spirit of God is always there. The anointing is always there. Every circumstance, every opportunity to get healed is there. Why has not God forced it upon us? Because that is where faith comes in. He wants us to believe. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, you cannot achieve what you have hoped for. Without faith, there is no reality from the spiritual realm to the physical realm. There is nothing to activate the faith in our lives if we do not believe it. People, you need to understand you want to receive from God, you need to have faith in God. You need to believe that He's going to provide. You need to believe that He is your healer. You need to believe that He's going to heal you at this very moment. You need to believe that the power of God is sufficient with you right now. You need to believe and just stand in faith that, you know what, I have been taking this, this pain for years and years, but I'm not going to take that anymore. You need to start to say, you know what, God did not tell me to be in this place. God did not put me. I don't need a power, special force of power surrounding me. I have the Holy Spirit with me. I have the fullness of the power within me right here, right at this moment. So I'm going to stand and believe that power can heal me. I'm going to take it and you will see it come to pass into your life. You can have faith that is activated in the power of God. You will see it mixed with power. When faith is mixed with power, you will see the reality of it come to pass in your life. I hope you, I hope you receive that. I hope you take it. You know, we've got more to cover, but, but we'll come here next time and we'll talk more about it. But I really hope you receive it tonight. I hope you receive your healing tonight. I believe that you will get it because you are starting to understand I'm going to apply faith to it. I'm going to believe for it. I'm going to mix this and I'm going to see it come to pass in my life. I hope you really learned here something tonight. Uh, let's pray. Let's believe God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the power and the anointing that is flowing even right around us right now and within us, Lord, Father. And breaking down every bondage, every barrier that is trying to hinder us from healing itself, Lord, Father. Oh, yes, Lord, Father. And we do it and we activate it by reaching out and activating the switch of faith, by actually accepting the truth of God, by believing it and setting our lives to say, you know what, I believe that He is my healer. I believe that by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Body, you line up to the Word of God. Life be in the name of Jesus and I receive it in His mighty name. Amen, amen. I hope you receive it. You take it by faith. It is yours. Next time we're here, we'll go much more into this, deeper into the faith and power, and we'll talk much more about it. Till then, I hope you are here with us and learn much more. And the next time, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bye-bye. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website, www.jclm.org. Or you can like our Facebook page, Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram, JCLMPG. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel, JCLMPG, to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.